Hey, New City, I hope this finds you well. I had the privilege of meeting with our staff team earlier today. And um, the thing we were really discussing together was how is COVID-19 and the unfolding pandemic situation affecting our church right now? That's the thing we were asking. And from the varying conversations that all of us are having with people. And um, one of the things that we became very aware of that just kind of moved to the front of the conversation was that um, the lack of predictability in life in general right now has been one of the most wearying forces for um, really everybody, but we're thinking specifically for the people in our church right now, just um, what's going to happen with um, school for my kids, what's going to happen with state guidelines that are coming out, what's going to happen with uh, my job, are we going to be back in person or not? So all of these things are a cumulative force that's that's leading to anxiety, that's leading to pressure, that's leading to depression, that's leading to all these things in the life of our church. And so um, we took some time today to pray for you, to ask for the Lord's continued provision and faithfulness in in your life and really coming out of that time and thinking about you today, I just want to offer a couple of encouragements. Um, number one, recognize that Jesus is with you specifically in your unique anxieties, your unique struggles, your unique uncertainties. That he is not, I'm speaking generally to our whole church, but right now, but know that the Lord is very specifically with you and for you. So today, would you just reflect on the love of Jesus? Just remember who he is. Remember his character. I was reminded in my own devotional time this week as I was reading the book of Isaiah that the faithfulness of God is not primarily demonstrated in the moment of victory and clarity and prosperity. No, the faithfulness of God really comes into view for the people of God when the whole world is blown up, when they've gotten themselves in a terrible situation where the world around them is not what it should be, um, when everything is broken, all of those situations, all of those situations, that is where the faithfulness and love of Jesus goes from being an abstract set of concepts to being the reality that it is, that he is the living Lord who is with us. So reflect on that love. That's encouragement number one. Um, encouragement number two, that in a season of unpredictability, predictable rhythms in your life can be a lifeline from the Father to you right now and to me. Um, and this is where things like prayer, where fasting, um, uh, reading and studying the word of God, of exercise, right? Using your, your God-given body and processing that anxiety physically. Um, Sabbath rest, all of these kind of rhythms are places where you can say, hey, in a world of unpredictability, right now I know that predictable, predictably, when I show up here, the Lord shows up to meet me. Think about this. Every time you open the Bible, every time, the pages fall open, and you can be certain that the Lord is going to speak authoritatively, kindly. Um, he's going to speak clarity into your life, clarity on who he is and what he's done, clarity on who you are and what you're being called to do. And so, man, I would encourage you now more than ever, um, sit down and write out what are the rhythms that God is calling me to embrace in my life in terms of prayer, scripture reading, um, meditation on the word of God, um, of Sabbath rest, of exercise. These things can be so helpful in this moment of uncertainty. So um, today I'd encourage you, pick up your Bible, I'd even say, pick up your paper Bible if you have one. As much time as you and I spend on a screen right now, having a physical object in front of you is surprisingly comforting. So open your Bible, spend a few moments with the Lord today. I, I'm sure that 
um, over the course of the long haul doing that kind of thing, you are not going to regret the time that you spend there. And so in the name of trying to be a source of consistency and predictability as much as that's possible in this season, I want to let you know what's going on with your church family through the rest of this holiday season as we enter into um, this special time at the end of the year. Um, number one, we fully intend to continue gathering in person through the rest of the year, regardless of any state uh, stipulations or mitigations that come out. Um, we plan to keep offering in-person gatherings and let you in wisdom decide what you want to do. Um, those gatherings are going to be strictly socially distanced. Um, there's going to be continued cleaning and sanitation protocols that are happening. There's going to be um, and there's going to be careful um, mask wearing. So masks are mandatory in our gatherings, no exceptions. Um, and then also, we're even going to be adding another physical location within our gathering, where let's say if you uh, if you want to spread out more, you just want a little more distance from people. Maybe you have young kiddos who, man, in this season when we haven't been doing in-person kids ministries, as those kiddos are just not quite old enough to know how to pay attention or engage in the gathering they've been. Um, it's hard on parents right now, right? So um, this other location could even be a space where you could let your kiddos spread out or play or be loud without feeling really any pressure. Um, we're going to have the live stream of our gathering rolling there. Um, the Lord's Supper will still be offered down there. And um, it's a place for you to get a little bit more distance if that makes you more comfortable. So all of these things we're doing um, are to try to promote the safest environment possible while continuing to demonstrate and experience um, the hope that Jesus is, is giving us. Um, that being said, um, so that's the first part where we are fully intending to continue gathering through the end of the year. The second piece of that is that we are going to take four strategic weeks over the holiday season where we gather online exclusively. Um, so the weeks of November 22nd and 29th around Thanksgiving and the weekend of the 20th and 27th of December around Christmas, we're going to take those gatherings completely online with no in-person gathering. Here's why. We want to give our staff our incredible volunteer serve team and the attenders of our worship gathering, um, the, the full ability to quarantine from large gatherings for those couple of weeks around the holidays so that they can travel home to visit family without fear that they're gonna be taking something home to people who are vulnerable. We wanna make sure that we're keeping everybody as safe as possible. And we think that this is the best way to do it. Um, in those weeks, if you are not worried about gathering in person and you're being smart with distancing and mask wearing and all those things, we would encourage you, have a few people over from your village family, have a few friends, students, if you're back home, um, view the live stream service um, with your family there um, in a smaller group. So um, that could be a unique week for some intentional shared community. It could be a unique week for maybe even inviting a neighbor or two over. Um, our hope is that this Thanksgiving and then as we head into the Advent and Christmas season, um, that these can be missional opportunities, that these can be opportunities for you to share hope. Um, maybe your neighbors who wouldn't normally go to church that you can share the live stream gathering with them or on those strategic off weeks that you may even invite them into your home. So. Um, we trust you to make wise and careful decisions in those regards as we're going to try to continue making wise and careful decisions. And so, New City, I love you. Um, I know that this season has been wearying, but I can say with authority that for the Christian church, for the church of Jesus, the best is yet to come. The best is always yet to come in eternity. And our hope, our desire for our church is that the Lord would give us a taste of that coming glory 
more and more in the here and now, that we'd be able to extend that same kind of hope to the people in our city who I'm convinced now more than ever desperately need it. For all intents and purposes, this is the worst time in the world to plant a church. But that is why I'm telling you, it puts hope and courage in my soul that it's exactly the most necessary time to plant a healthy, gospel-centered, multiplying church. Our city needs hope. Friends, you are new city. The Lord has sent you out as a beacon of that hope. Well, I pray this has encouraged you. I pray it's given you some clarity. And please know, if you want to talk more about this, please come grab me after the gathering from six feet away. We'll do a corona bump or a wave or something, and we'll have a conversation. Um, feel free to uh, email hello at my new city, and someone from our staff team will get you connected with me if you want to talk more about this. Um, and then if you have my contact information, please feel free to let me out and, or reach out and let me know um, how I can serve you or maybe if we can have, if you want to have more conversation about this. So New City, I love you. You are loved and you are sent.